has flown into combat from South Africa to Southern Iraq. Yet its greatest challenge is obsolescence. Across five decades, through generations of models, the Mirage has survived. The secret to its success, a far-sighted company that designed the shape of planes to come. For a century, the name Dassault Aviation has been synonymous with French combat aircraft. France was one of the pioneers of military aviation. In World War I, France built more combat aircraft than any other nation. Fighters like Newport, Spad, and Breguet. After the war, the French aviation industry flourished. Among the new firms, Block Aviation. Its aircraft included the MB-200 bomber. And the radial-engined MB-150 series of fighters. When France fell in 1940, the brother of the head of Block Aviation joined the French resistance. After the war, Marcel Bloch renamed his company after his brother's resistance code name. And so, Dassault Aviation was born, and pivotal in ushering France into the jet age. In 1947, Dassault began work on the first generation of French jet fighters, the Ouragan, or Hurricane, which entered service in 1952. Oregon soon evolved into the Mystère 4, France's first supersonic fighter and one of the best combat aircraft of its day. Powered by a Verdun jet engine, the Mystère 4 could reach speeds of 696 miles per hour and was heavily armed with 30 millimeter cannons. Like all Dassault designs, it had a long service life and helped spawn other superior aircraft. During the mid-1950s, Dassault Aviation began development of a radical new aircraft design capable of speeds above Mach 2. The new fighter used a delta wing configuration, a shape that would become a trademark of Dassault fighters in the decades to come. Intended primarily as an all-weather interceptor, the Mirage III entered French Air Force service in 1961. Powered by the Snecma turbojet engine, the Mirage could achieve speeds of over 1,600 miles per hour. With more than 1,400 produced, the Mirage served for many years in France, as well as other foreign air forces. It carried a variety of missiles in its long career but relied primarily on a pair of 30 millimeter cannons mounted in its belly. These weapons can be devastatingly effective when used in the ground attack role, as was amply demonstrated by Israeli Mirage jets in the 1967 Mideast War. Je crois que tous les les avions ont une histoire. Et un certain nombre d'avions dans le monde ont eu une histoire. 
Le Mirage est un de ces avions qui a été euh, extrêmement porté par euh, un événement particulier qui a été la guerre des six jours euh, en Israël et qui a rendu tout d'un coup cet avion extrêmement euh, populaire à travers le monde et qui en a fait un, un symbole d'avions euh, manœuvrants, euh, performants et puis euh, c'était un symbole de la technologie française. The Mirage 3 became the template for a much larger Delta Wing aircraft, the Mirage 4 bomber. Though similar in shape, the twin-engine Mirage 4 was a large, supersonic strike aircraft designed foremost to deliver strategic nuclear weapons. The Mirage 3 airframe proved adaptable to new concepts in aviation design, including vertical takeoff aircraft like the Mirage 3-5. While it could exceed Mach 2, the Mirage 3-5 lacked the range to make it a practical combat aircraft. The classic Delta Wing had shortcomings in some flight regimes. And so in the late 1960s, Dassault began experimenting with a variety of wing configurations. This led to the highly successful Mirage F-1 series of fighters, marked by conventional swept wings and a standard tail surface. The Mirage F-1 marked a breakthrough in Dassault fighter designs, with a performance markedly superior to previous models. A multi-role aircraft, the F-1 offered double the range of the Mirage 3 and excellent maneuverability. A true multi-purpose fighter, the Mirage F-1 entered service in 1973 and is capable of conducting strike missions or engaging in air-to-air -air combat. The Mirage F-1 can also be adapted to the naval strike mission, armed with the famous Exocet anti-ship missile. With such versatility, it's no wonder the F-1 has been exported throughout the world, serving in over 10 foreign air forces. Yet the Mirage's shape was about to return to its roots, thanks to a radical breakthrough in technology. For generations, fighter aircraft were controlled by the pilot, moving a control stick and rudder pedals to command the rudder, elevator, and ailerons. But the high speed of modern aircraft made such controls difficult to use. In more advanced aircraft, they were replaced by electronic systems, spawning the term fly-by-wire. In the United States, the F-16 Fighting Falcon was the first fighter to use this technology. Dassault quickly followed suit with the fly-by-wire Mirage 2000. Dans ce domaine, Dassault a été euh, véritablement un constructeur en avance sur son temps sur les commandes de vol. C'est toujours été une des grandes forces de la société Dassault d'avoir su euh, créer des commandes de vol qui étaient adaptées aux qualités aérodynamiques de ces avions. Particulier euh, sur un bombardier comme le Mirage 4, euh, il y avait déjà tout un système de commandes de vol électriques avec un système de réversion mécanique en cas de problème du système électrique. Et puis l'évolution naturelle avec l'apparition des avions CCV, comme le F-16. Fly-by-wire technology has been key to the enhanced maneuverability found on most modern fighters. Greater maneuverability is critical in a dogfight not only for getting onto an opponent's tail, but also evading enemy aircraft or missiles. Using fly-by-wire controls, the pilot can maneuver the plane to its full potential, a potential sometimes beyond the capacity of the pilot himself. 
The computerized flight control system monitors every movement of the aircraft and every control activated by the pilot. It also permits aircraft to depart from conventional design requirements. With traditional flight control systems, an aircraft had to be designed with inherent stability, often at the expense of optimal maneuverability. Fly-by-wire eliminates these design limitations. Instead of building inherently stable aircraft, designers using fly-by-wire technology can produce planes that are substantially less stable and thus much more maneuverable. Fly-by-wire allowed Dassault to return to its classic Delta design in the Mirage 2000 fighter. The computer-assisted flight controls compensated for any shortcomings in the Delta wing configuration. Les commandes de vol gomment un petit peu les, les défauts qu'il y avait sur les Delta classiques. Dès qu'on prenait beaucoup d'incidences sur un avion Delta classique, euh, l'avion s'enfonçait et, et pouvait devenir euh, très difficile à piloter. Euh, sur un Mirage 2000, euh, les commandes de vol empêchent d'atteindre ces, ces incidences et donc euh, l'avion reste toujours pilotable. Et des becs sur les, les Delta à, à commande de vol électrique qui améliore quand même considérablement les qualités de l'avion à basse vitesse. Et on ne pouvait pas le mettre sur un avion Delta normal parce que l'avion aurait été réellement impilotable. Il n'y a que les commandes de vol électriques qui permettent de, de piloter ce, cet avion. The Mirage 2000 pilot could fly the aircraft to the very limits of its maneuvering envelope without fear of entering into an unrecoverable position. Although the Mirage 2000 most closely resembles its 1960s ancestor, the Mirage 3, its role is more akin to that of its predecessor, the F-1. Designed as a multi-purpose fighter, the Mirage 2000 is capable of both air-to-air -air combat and ground attack strikes. There are two distinct variants of Mirage 2000s. The Mirage 2000C is mainly intended for dogfighting. The 2000D, a two-seat version, was designed for long-range, deep-strike missions with modern guided munitions. In this variant, a weapons officer who manages the attack radar and weapons systems occupies the second seat. Guided munitions are crucial to the success of modern strike fighters. The Mirage 2000 strike fighters are equipped with a variety of strike weapons. During the 1991 Gulf War, French aircraft used the laser-guided AS-30L missile to devastate hardened Iraqi aircraft shelters, sometimes guiding the bomb right through open doors. The Mirage 2000 is armed with the Apache cruise missile. The stealthy Apache is a standoff weapon, launched more than 80 miles from its target to avoid exposing the Mirage to enemy air defenses. The Apache flies into enemy territory and delivers its submunitions against the target. These can include specialized munitions for attacking massed tank formations or disabling airfields and runways. Unlike its striker cousin, the Mirage 2000C is mainly intended for the classic interceptor mission of engaging enemy aircraft. In modern air-to-air -air combat, the fighter who engages first and at the greatest range usually wins. Vital to spotting and engaging the enemy first is the aircraft's radar. 
la, la capacité est, est, est de pouvoir engager euh, loin, parce que ça reste un missile euh, à longue portée, euh, loin, plusieurs avions simultanément, sans rentrer dans la phase d'engagement de combat rapproché. In older generations of fighters, radar could track only enemy aircraft at the same altitude or higher. Enemy aircraft flying near the ground got lost in the clutter of the landscape. But advances in radar now permit fighters like the Mirage 2000C to locate and attack enemy aircraft flying below them. It's called look-down, shoot-down capability. Très important parce que euh, d'abord une, une grande partie de la menace reste euh, sur les avions qui volent près du sol, soit des cruise missiles, soit des avions euh, pilotés. Et aussi de la basse altitude. Donc il est très important que les avions soient capables non seulement de voir vers le sol, mais aussi de tirer vers le sol. The Mirage Jet's superior combat abilities were demonstrated during 1991's Operation Desert Storm, codenamed Operation Dague by French forces. Ground attack missions were performed by a squadron of Jaguars and a squadron of Mirage F-1s. Mirage 2000s of the 5th Fighter Squadron operated out of al Assa Air Base on combat air patrol missions to prevent Iraqi air attacks to Saudi Arabia. Widely exported, Mirage jets have seen combat around the globe. The Mirage 3 was made famous by the Israeli Air Force in the 1967 Mideast War. The Mirage was later improved in Israel and evolved into the Kafir fighter. The South African Air Force also used Mirages extensively in combat flying the Mirage 3 and F-1. The Mirage F-1 fitted our role that we saw for the future of the Air Force in that it has uh, both roles, air to air as well as air to ground strike. Mirage F-1 has seen uh, combat in um, southern Angola as well as other um, areas in Africa. We have flown over 1,800 combat missions in both the air-to-ground as well as the air-to-air -air role. The missions were mainly in the air-to-air -air role interception as well as uh, combat air patrols and in the air-to-ground role mainly strike and interdiction roles. During the fighting over Angola, Mirage F-1s were confronted with a wide array of advanced Soviet-made radar-guided missiles. But these formidable defenses were evaded by flying in under the radar. For us, in order to survive, we had to fly at very low level, and that was anything from 20 to 50 feet, depending on the nature of the terrain. And this was done to uh, dodge the radar systems and also to um, get the surprise on our side. The enemy aircraft that we encountered were basically MiG-21s, uh, MiG-23s and uh, Su-22s was the other type that we encountered. We didn't lose any aircraft in combat, whereas the enemy uh, lost two MiG-21s, and uh, there was unconfirmed reports of other aircraft lost by them as well. To bolster their forces, South Africa's Air Force decided to improve their older Mirage 3s. The result? A modernized variant called the Cheetah. We decided to update the old Mirage 3 fleet with uh, new avionics, a new sighting system and a nav weapon system. As far as combat is concerned, uh, the changes in the, uh, the Cheetah compared to the Mirage 3, uh, it made the aircraft uh, a little bit more maneuverable. Back in France, the Mirage was about to undergo its greatest evolution, a supersonic leap into the future. By the late 1990s, the French wanted a next generation fighter jet. They found it in the stealthy Rafale. The Rafale began development in the early 1980s as a technology test platform. 
The Rafal A tested the flight envelope possible with new fly-by-wire controls. Two other key attributes were also explored, super cruise and stealth. Conventional jet fighters attain their high speeds by igniting their afterburners. But they pay a high price, heavy fuel consumption, which reduces the aircraft's combat range. New jet engines and a new airframe design promise supersonic flight without the use of afterburners. This is called Super Cruise. In 1991, the first product of this test program, the Rafal C, made its maiden flight. Though it shares the classic Delta design of the Mirage family, the Rafal has a sleek, blended body. Its design was selected to reduce the plane's radar signature and so approach invisibility to enemy radar. Full stealth capability requires an airframe that would compromise an aircraft's maneuverability. The Rafal was designed to incorporate as many stealth features as possible without adversely affecting its performance as a fighter. The Rafal is equipped with two Snecma M88 engines, enabling it to reach speeds of Mach 2 and an altitude of 55,000 feet. Rafal entered service with the French Navy in 1999, and the first Rafal Air Squadron will be based at saint dizier in 2006. With its Delta Canard configuration and ability to perform air superiority, interceptor, recon, and ground attack maneuvers on a single mission, the Rafal will carry on Dassault's tradition of aerodynamic excellence.